Coming up, how hydrogen could transform the way we move stuff around the globe. By road. There's only water vapor coming out of the tailpipe. By water. The Americans did this for the space shuttle. And even by air. You would be able to buy tickets for London to Paris in just three years. The USA and the port of Los Angeles, North America's largest container port. In a single year, $300 billion worth of goods pass through here, transported in over 10 million containers, most of which leave the port on these trucks. Around 8,000 of them a day. But, and there's always a but, it comes at a cost because over 8% of global CO2 emissions comes from moving goods around the world. So could this be a way to help lower those emissions? A vehicle Hyundai hopes will revolutionize road haulage. A hydrogen powered truck. Jerome, hey there. Good Let's to see, see you. you. Thank you very much for having me on board. I gotta say, I'm quite excited actually. This is my very first hydrogen powered truck. All right, Let's perfect. Go. Let's go. It's funny because, I mean, these trucks are so much part of American culture. In a way, they look exactly the same, but just suddenly without any of the emissions. Correct. There's only water vapor coming out of the <laughs> tailpipe. Let me just talk a little bit about the, the science. Essentially, it's the same as a hydrogen powered car, whereby you have hydrogen which goes into the fuel cell, which generates the electricity. It's exactly the same concept, yeah. uh, just scaled up to the size of this vehicle. To understand how this is possible, let's take this truck apart. To provide enough power, behind us sit tanks containing 1,800 litres of compressed hydrogen. It's almost 15 times the amount of a family car that feed a stack of fuel cells. As hydrogen atoms travel between two charged plates, a membrane splits them into protons and electrons. The flowing electrons create an electric current, which powers an electric motor or a series of batteries. On the other side of the fuel cell, the protons and electrons combine with oxygen, creating only water vapour. The Californian authorities hope by 2035, 70,000 hydrogen-powered HGVs like this will have replaced diesel trucks on the roads. Let's switch it! Let's switch it! Do you want to switch? Are you jealous of our truck? <laughs> there we go, we have one customer. I've got to say, I am impressed with the technology, but I'm interested in how the dyed-in-the-wool truckers are going to take to it. So I've decided, as an experiment, I've invited my trucker friend Ingrid to put it to the test. You know, Ingrid, you win the prize for best interior design of a truck. I love it in here. I mean, Thanks! <laughs> It looks really nice. It's got that old school yeah. look, as we call it. Now, I've got to ask you, first of all, how long have you been driving diesel trucks? Are you going to believe me if I, I tell I, you? Well, okay. try me. All right, 43 years. I don't believe December. you. I don't believe you. <laughs> yes, I started years. in 1979. Do you know how many miles you've done like in your career? I'm just hitting 5 million. 5 million miles. 5 million miles. You are the perfect person. Will you take our hydrogen truck for a spin and tell us what you think? Let's do it. Well, the first thing I'm really picking up on with it is it doesn't have any hesitation when I go to give it some power to take off. I can feel it's smooth. It's real smooth. Nice. Do you realize how oh, quiet it is? That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? Let's talk about range. So your diesel truck will do, with a full load behind you, how many miles? About 900. This will do 500 miles. Is that good enough? Yes. Yes. You have to remember, we have to take a 30-minute break. Oh, do you? Before your first eight hours, so that would fit right in it to when you do your 30-minute break, you're allowed to, to fuel at that time. Yeah. So it wouldn't interrupt or take away any time at all. And talking of refueling, Shell's built three filling stations in the greater Los Angeles area along heavily used routes and is considering how that network can grow in the future. 
would have never dreamed if I would even said yes to driving this truck because I have got so much what we call old school blood in me. I don't like change. I can feel that I would change. Would you swap your truck for this truck? <laughs> you could Honestly? Be yeah, you could be. Okay. Yeah, I would. I'm pretty sure I've seen the future of trucking, but can the same technology be used in other modes of transport? The United Kingdom and Cotswold Airport in the west of England. When able, vacate Delta, continue C2 hangar. I've arrived here to see for myself the cutting edge hydrogen technology that could revolutionize aviation and make aircraft like this one a little bit old school. Great, thank you very much indeed. Aviation produces 3% of all global CO2 emissions. At Zero Avia, they think hydrogen fuel cell tech could eliminate them altogether. Inside this hangar, exciting things are afoot and I've got exclusive access to go inside to find out more. Val Miftikoff is Zero Avia's founder and CEO. Val, Dallas. Hi, Dallas. Good to meet you. Thanks for having us. OK, so you've got a plane. What have you done to it? We are an engine company. We can take existing aircraft and re-engine and, them. And retrofit them. So you see this, it's completely different inside. There is no combustion going on. Uh, so this is electric motors driving the so propeller. Just an electric motor in there. Absolutely. This electric motor is powered by a hydrogen fuel cell that's just been installed on board. Just take us through what I'm looking at, because there's a lot of kit. So these are the fuel cell systems that take hydrogen yep. from the tanks that you can see over there. So they contain hydrogen, compressed yep. hydrogen, then it goes into the fuel cells and produce electricity that gets used in the motor. It's an exciting time. This plane has completed its first test flight, the biggest aircraft yet to be powered by a hydrogen electric engine. And at the very same time, Zero Avia are working on the next generation of fuel cell, powerful enough to fly much larger planes. In terms of me flying from London to Paris, for example, on a hydrogen-powered aircraft, what's the time scale? It's great that you picked London to Paris because you'd be able to buy tickets for that flight in just three years. We have already close to 1,500 engines on uh, pre-orders. In terms of aviation, what effect do you think this is going to have? I mean, once we start scaling it up, you know, beyond test flights. So the beauty of this is that um, with hydrogen electric, you can get to zero carbon emission, but also zero nitrogen oxide, zero particulate emission. The plan is for airports running these aircraft to make their own lower carbon hydrogen to refuel planes on site. One of the senior team, Dominic Weeks, is showing me how. Right, let's have a look. Okay. But this is not what I was expecting. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of flashing lights, but <laughs> essentially what you've got here is modular electrolyzers. Each electrolyzer generates hydrogen through a process called electrolysis. It's the reverse of what happens in a fuel cell. Pass a strong electric current through water and you split it into oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen can then be collected, ready for use. Ah, here we are. So these are the hydrogen storage tanks. So this is all the hydrogen that's made in there and then gets stored here. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we store it in here, we use this truck, and we can drive it out to the aircraft and we refuel from there. Okay, so actually this moves and you just use it like a, you would a kind of aviation fuel truck that you'd yeah, see at just an airport. Yeah, like, just like a Bowser you find at an airport, yeah. If the revolutionary hydrogen electric tech on this plane could be scaled up to commercial flights, it would change the aviation industry significantly. Hydrogen-powered planes promise to go a long way in reducing aviation emissions, but flying is not the only way we move around the planet. France and Le Havre, the country's biggest container port. Every year, 50,000 ships move 11 billion tonnes of goods across the world to ports like this but many burn diesel to do it. The good news is that 
across the world's waterways, shipping companies are already looking towards alternative forms of cleaner energy, including hydrogen. This is the Zulu 6, which is, well, it's a bit of a work in progress at the moment. Right now, it's got electric motors that are powered by diesel, but all that's about to change. Because with funds from the European Union, this 250-ton barge is being converted to run on hydrogen fuel cells. Dave, salut! Salut! <laughs> I love it here. You've got lots and lots of space for a couple of tennis courts. Yes. Maybe a hot tub. <laughs> yeah. Cocktail bar. Many use <laughs> possible, but we are using it for more industrial use. So this is going to be the very, very first hydrogen vessel in the world that's going to be <laughs> delivering goods into city centres. Yes, for this use, we will be the first. The plan is for hydrogen-powered barges like this to deliver food, clothing, building materials, you name it, into the heart of Europe's cities. And crucially, take trucks off the roads. In terms of the technical stuff, can you just show us where everything goes? We will get two fuel cells on the each side of this green box with this engine room exit, and then we will have the storage of hydrogen just in front. The hydrogen fuel cells will generate electricity that's stored in giant batteries, which in turn power an electric motor. And this is it. This is the motor. I've got the hydrogen tanks above deck, the fuel cell above deck. Down here you've got the batteries and then this is what's actually going to be powering the barge. The whole thing is going to be so much quieter, so much cleaner. The big challenge is how to apply this hydrogen fuel cell technology to these. If you want to understand how the modern world works, you couldn't really get a better view than this. It's just massive, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's massive and this isn't even one of the big ones. Container ships transport 90% of global trade across the planet and contribute 3% of all global CO2 emissions. I'm talking to Professor Stephen Turnock to find out how hydrogen tech could be applied to marine shipping. Thinking about scaling up, how can you go using hydrogen from something small like a barge or a car or a truck to something like this? Probably on a, a larger vessel, it's going to be cryogenic tanks. So that's a liquid hydrogen. Yeah. You have to keep it as minus 250 degrees centigrade. It's possible to do it. You know, the Americans did this for the space shuttle and other rocket programs. So you can do it. Not only would that be a massive win for the environment, it also provides an unexpected bonus when it comes to ship design. In an ordinary ship, diesel is stored in tanks below deck, but at above deck, and the weight of the fuel means the ship might tip over, particularly in rough weather. But hydrogen is extremely light, meaning tanks can be safely placed on deck or wherever you want. So whatever your cargo, you can custom build a ship to suit it. Can you envisage a time in the next decade where it's going to happen? I mean, is it going to happen? My view is it will happen because it has to happen. From about 2030 onwards, you should be building zero carbon ships. So what have I learned? Well, on water, land, and in the air, hydrogen could transform how we move goods around, cutting emissions and helping us get closer to net zero. Next time, how hydrogen could clean up global industry. I sort of teared up and I thought, you know, I've something something really big here. And how to transport hydrogen across the globe to power that industry. It's a giant vacuum <laughs> flask. If you've enjoyed this, watch the rest of the series here.